In the 1960s, as Jane Goodall initiated her close observation of chimpanzees, the prevailing belief was that toolmaking was an exclusive behavior of humans. Anthropologists in the early 20th century even defined humans as the species that possesses the ability to make tools. However, it has since been revealed that this capacity is not unique to humans. As we previously discussed, many traits once thought exclusive to humans are, in fact, shared by other species, and the intricacies of these discoveries are quite captivating. For those intrigued by these topics, I strongly recommend viewing the video on animal intelligence. Though it is now taken for granted, the skill of using tools is genuinely mesmerizing. Consider an animal employing a seemingly unrelated stone or stick to overcome an obstacle obstructing its desired destination. The animal must exhibit sufficient intelligence to recognize that using the stone or stick will eliminate the barrier and allow it to reach its goal. It's a remarkable ability for an animal to conceptualize how to utilize a tool, manipulate it, and devise a strategy for reaching its target, all without physically employing the tool purely through mental contemplation. This feat is not easily accomplished, and even some humans might question their ability to do so. Yet. Using a tool differs from crafting one. Merely attempting to overcome obstacles in the wild using naturally occurring structures and shapes is insufficient. Creating something you recognize as necessary or can at least imagine but does not yet exist in nature introduces an entirely different dimension. Toolmaking represents a cognitive revolution. It defines our humanity and contributes to the development of civilization. It is the driving force behind everything from modern technology, automobiles, aircraft, rockets, televisions, the internet, to mobile phones, stemming from the notion that one can shape objects according to their needs by striking one stone against another. This concept traces its roots back to the Stone Age, as depicted in the Flintstones cartoon. The Stone Age comprises three significant periods, with the first being the Lower Paleolithic period, marking the inception of tool-based culture. This period began approximately 2.5 to 3.5 million years ago during the emergence of the Homo genus and persisted until the ascent of Homo sapiens. In essence, it spanned from around 200,000 to 300,000 years ago until the advent of modern humans. During this era, humanity solely engaged in hunting and gathering and had not yet discovered agriculture. Survival relied on wild animals, birds, fish, as well as wild fruits, nuts, and berries gathered by hand. It was during this time that humans first acquired the skill of crafting tools by striking one stone against another. By striking two stones at the correct angle and speed, individuals observed the detachment of small, pointed fragments, referred to as lithic flakes or simply flakes, from the softer stone known as the lithic core. Subsequently, these flakes were repurposed as knives, axe heads, and spear points, leading to the development of what we now recognize as the Olduin culture. Following the initial development, the workshop culture underwent evolution based on larger flakes. During this period, our ancestors exhibited a cultural and civilizational resemblance to the orangutans or chimpanzees mentioned earlier. The emergence of Homo sapiens, occurring approximately 300,000 years ago, marked a departure from its ancestor Homo heidelbergensis and a distinction from its close relatives, the Neanderthals. Heralding the onset of the Middle Paleolithic era that persisted until about 28,000 years ago. Interestingly, although the tools of this period were more intricate, the dominant tools belonged not to Homo sapiens but to our Neanderthal cousins, Homo neanderthalensis. At that time, Neanderthals, who were as dominant as us, demonstrated a cognitive capacity and cultural complexity enabling them to provide special care for their elderly and conduct rituals for the deceased. The Mysterian tools associated with this culture reflected features aligned with the stronger grip strength of Neanderthals' hands in comparison to ours and the points we could produce. During this epoch, Homo sapiens embarked on their first global migrations, venturing beyond Africa. Notably, we reached the continent of Australia for the first time and achieved mastery over fire. We adorned our bodies with jewelry and paints, 
and wall paintings made their debut. Most significantly, genuine solidarity emerged during this period. While our species and ancestors had some level of social life before, it was during the Middle Paleolithic that we began displaying cooperation under more challenging and complex conditions. For instance, we transitioned from hunting in small and singular groups to hunting in larger, more coordinated groups. This transition fostered collaboration, the development of more intricate social relationships, and an ability to adapt to the desires and needs of others. In essence, our modern culture began to take root during this era. Subsequently, the Upper Paleolithic period unfolded, extending until about 12,000 years ago. During this phase, leading up to the construction of Gobekli Tepe and the advent of agriculture, Homo sapiens became increasingly specialized in toolmaking. Our tools became more diverse and sophisticated. We honed our access to food, crafting blow darts, underwater spears, fish hooks, oil lamps, and ropes. Our wall paintings, for the first time, incorporated dots and lines to represent the phases of the moon. In the same drawings, we started using shapes resembling the letter Y to depict animal birth. Spreading relentlessly, we covered the entire Eurasia, and it was during this period that our closest cousins, the Neanderthals, who lived at that time, became extinct. Interspecies and intertribal conflicts, along with extensive geographical spread, led to the development of ethnic cultural understanding, giving rise to local cultural variations rather than a shared culture for the entire species. Consequently, our tools began to exhibit local differences. After the Bronze Age that lasted for about 1,300 years following the use of stones, the Iron Age followed, and our civilization, as you all know, has reached today. Nowadays, we not only use iron but also steel, which is iron reinforced with carbon. We are producing entirely new materials. Not to mention, we can even create new elements. However, I want to draw your attention to something. Nearly the entire lifespan of the Homo genus and the 14 human species we have discovered so far occurred in the Stone Age. Consider this. The Homo genus has been around for 2 to 3 million years. The Stone Age lasted for over 2.5 million years. So, despite appearances such as venturing into space or floating metal masses to open up continents, the history of humanity is almost entirely the history of the Stone Age. The next chapter in this change could be just as exciting when observed in non-human species. Let me give you an example. Capuchin monkeys living in Brazil. Normally, they can crack hard-shelled fruits with stones or use stones to extract spiders hidden underground. We already knew that. However, experts closely studying these animals observed that capuchins sometimes break stones by hitting them against each other and then lick the broken pieces. We still don't know exactly why they exhibit this behavior. They may be eating minerals accumulated in the broken stones, but when researchers examined the lithic flakes scattered around from the stones they broke to lick the dust, they found that these flakes were almost identical in quality to those produced by humans. It seems that these capuchins didn't start producing these tools a few years ago. They have been doing it for hundreds or even thousands of years. Although there's no observation yet of them turning these produced flakes into weapons, they might be doing it, and we might have completely overlooked it. In other words, such a revolutionary discovery might be awaiting the next Jane Goodall. Yes, I'm addressing you. Aside from capuchins, we already know that some primates can use tools in ways different from their most obvious uses. For example, even chimpanzees, which we consider closer, like bonobos, no longer use thick sticks just to probe termite nests. They also use them as levers to move stones and nests that would otherwise be difficult to lift. Additionally, bonobos can access bone marrow by hitting pointed stones against bones or create spears from tree branches to use as weapons or barriers. According to pathologists, the methods used by bonobos resemble those of Homo sapiens who produced that Olduin culture encountered in the Lower Paleolithic. And that's not all. Even orangutans living with humans have been observed exhibiting advanced behaviors like washing clothes and blankets. These are just a few examples of the advanced use of tools. 
All these observations gave rise to a field called primate archaeology in the last 12 to 13 years and subsequently the claim that these species have entered the Stone Age. However, there are a few important points to remember when making such a claim. First, by stating that other species using and even making stone tools are in the Stone Age just because humans went through it and reached today. We are suggesting that a biological or cultural evolution capable of creating a complex being that can build civilizations like humans has only one possible path. In other words, we are implying that other monkeys are also on the path to becoming human and even have to be. This is a question often asked by those who have not fully understood evolution. If humans came from monkeys, why aren't other monkeys becoming humans? However, there is no purpose or goal in evolution to become human. The surname that came to humans created them because of what happened to them. It's impossible for a completely different species to go through the same genetic pool and the same chain of changes. Of course, under similar conditions, similar features will evolve. I had talked about parallel evolution. But just because an animal uses stone tools doesn't mean it will transition to the Bronze Age and then the Iron Age like humans. Perhaps they will build an entirely different culture and construct civilization on a completely different backbone. Therefore, we need to completely discard the idea that the purpose of evolution is to create humans. Currently, all species alive are as evolutionarily successful as we are because they are still alive. Oh, we are destroying them because of our culture. That's different. But from the perspective of biology, which is the main field of evolution, these are not inferior species. Why new living beings don't emerge from the chemical soup nowadays? As we discussed a few weeks ago with my dear friend Firkin Osterk from Harvard University. If you haven't watched our live broadcast, I recommend watching it from start to finish. One of the questions we dissected there was why new beings don't emerge from the chemical soup today. And we know the answer to this very well. Because existing life, especially microbial life, has already occupied every place where life could start anew from scratch. Therefore, some chemical molecules on the surface of sweet waters or around hydrothermal vents under the ocean cannot go beyond being a biocidal complexity for the existing life. However, just because monkeys are in the Stone Age, it doesn't mean they can build human-like cultures. Thirdly, academic studies provide conflicting results regarding the abilities of monkeys to make stone tools. For instance, in one study, researchers provided chimpanzees with all the materials they would need to make stone tools, yet they observed that chimpanzees couldn't assemble them into meaningful tools. Even when researchers created incentives by placing their favorite food behind obstacles that could only be opened using those stone tools, chimpanzees couldn't reach the desired food by creating a simple tool. However, when they introduced a human who demonstrated how to make the tool, chimpanzees were able to learn toolmaking by watching humans and even teach other chimpanzees. So, if there is a spark that could ignite civilization in non-human primates, that spark might be humans themselves. In conclusion, while it might be enjoyable to think that non-human primates have entered the Stone Age and indulge in dreams akin to Planet of the Apes, it's not clear what exactly such an assumption achieves. Of course, if monkeys are on the path to building an advanced culture, it's important to recognize this early. Ultimately, when we look back at our archaeological research on human history and examine areas where we coexisted with animals like capuchins or chimpanzees, we must consider that some tools discovered may have been made by non-human primates. Beyond this, whether other primates have entered the Stone Age or not doesn't seem to matter much. After all, what it means is not something we can understand right now, but something we might comprehend when we look back a few hundred thousand years later. It's crucial to understand that we are not the only species with culture, and that raises a single question. As the dominant species, will we provide living space for these other cultures as nature once did for us? To find the answer to this question, we'll have to wait for a future video. Goodbye for now.